hosting us today. Um, my name is Mohammed. I am going to talk about um, something pretty fun that Trigger has been doing for the past six years, which is using Sidekick to run our e-commerce infrastructure. Now, um, let me just go quickly over who I am. I'm an engineering manager at Trigger.co. Um, I really love technical books. Um, and I'm a really bad impersonator. Um, we've had, like, a few years ago, we had, like, movie posters impersonation. And I failed miserably at that. Um, so I want to start out with a number. So this is the amount of jobs, amount of operations that Trigico has been running for the past year on top of our uh, psychic infrastructure. And so what that means is per second, we synchronize about 350 jobs to different partners, different APIs, different stores, different um, users. Um, and to reach that scale, um, what I want to do actually is first take a, a deep dive into what, how Sidekick works and how we utilize it. And then I'm going to talk a bit about the challenges um, that given Sidekick architecture as a code, uh, how we've actually faced certain challenges, how we've solved them, and then how it actually helped us now to reach that number. Um, Sidekick, if just by a raise of hand, who has used Sidekick before in their production, in their systems? Cool. OK. So Sidekick simply is a job server, job processor. Um, from your web server, you can basically push data into Redis. And Sidekick basically servers will pick up the data and will process it. We'll go over a bit more details about it to see the internals, but this is the general view, overview. Now, Sidekick itself as a gym runs in two modes. It can run in a server mode and in a client mode. If you run it within Rails, it runs in a client mode. If you run it through the bin Sidekick executable, it runs in server mode. And it differs a lot how you configure that and how you actually start the, the process. Um, so what I'll start with actually is talking more about the journey between the server and client. So this is an example of a job that you can write in Rails. You know, you can just put the perform method. You just need to implement the perform method, and you can do work there. You can also specify options and arguments, but we'll see that later. And this is how you can call any job that you've defined. You can call it either synchronously or asynchronously or in delay execution. Um, so the journey of any job that you fire up usually is um, as soon as you call the job via perform async, Sidekick will actually wrap up the job into a hash and represent the arguments, the data, the names, everything, and put the queue name. Now, as it goes down, it goes through a layer called the middleware. Sidekick middleware is uh, basically, there's a client middleware and there's a server middleware. The client middleware can choose not to send the job to Redis. And that is something you can configure. So you can basically use default middlewares through Psychic extensions, but you can also create your own middleware. And the middleware basically can take a job and decide, you know what, no, I don't want to send this to Redis. And basically, we'll return nothing. So your code will just continue executing, thinking that it emitted a job, but the middleware could say, no, I don't want to emit a job. If that's the case, then the job just goes discarded. Otherwise, it will actually go through the middleware come back up, and it will be wrapped up and pushed into Redis. Um, on the server side, your server will be listening, and we'll talk in detail what the server has, but there will be an agent inside the server called the processor that listens to specific queues. So the lists are, the lists are named in Redis by the name of the queue. And one of the processors inside the server will be listening and blocked until one item comes into the queue. If there are no items, the processor will listen to the queue and will wait until something comes in. Otherwise, if there are jobs to be processed, it will just keep picking them up. As it picks up the job, it will actually pass it through something called the server middleware. Now, the server middleware is also a middleware layer that allows Sakic to decide, I don't want to execute this job. So you can control your jobs from two areas, basically. You can either decide not to push it, 
Or if it's pushed into the list, then maybe by the time you pick it up, you decided, you know what, I don't want to do this job. It's late or it's outdated. And then as it goes through the server middleware, then the actual execution starts of the job. Now, inside Psychic, what happens usually, and I'll start with a bootstrap process of a Psychic server, is that Psychic, when you run bin Psychic, the, in, the, the most important object is the Psychic CLI. And Psychic CLI basically has few responsibilities to do. One of them is it validates that the bootstrap arguments are correct. So it looks at your shell arguments and it's like, oh, did you pass me the right concurrency? Did you pass me the right names of the queues? Other things. It loads Rails. It depends on it, so it loads Rails. And it does few health checks for the Redis version. So it looks at Redis version. As Psychic progresses, certain features can only be enabled for specific features, uh, specific versions of Redis. So sometimes the Psychic process will exit early and say, no, I don't support this version of Redis. It will also check your Redis connection pool. So if you give it a zero connection pool, a pool that cannot connect to Redis, it will detect that and say, like, you know what? No, I don't want to actually start. Um, and it will eager load the server middleware. So the code that is the server middleware will be eager loaded into the psychic parent process so that the threads that we'll talk, we'll talk about later, the workers, don't have to load the middleware to copies of it. So that saves up memory. And more, most importantly, is it configure single signal handling. So if you're deployed in the cloud, like Heroku, AWS, and others, Psychic needs to listen to the OS signals. If the OS says, nope, shut down, Psychic needs to be able to listen to those events and stop the queue's processors and exit. So configuring signal handling code happens at this stage in the bootstrap process. And then one actor, and that's what we're going to talk about now, how Psychic is designed as a code base, is one actor, the main actor called the launcher, starts working. This actor, everything here is on the main thread. Starting the launcher and beyond, there will be multiple threads spinned off to actually enable concurrency. So Psychic uses actors. Um, I'll go through a bit. So actor model or actor-oriented design is popular in a lot of concurrent languages, like you'll see Elixir, Erlang, uh, Akka, Scala, Akka. A lot of other frameworks and, and languages have tried to implement this, or they support it and enable people to write things in actor model or actor-oriented programming. The goal of it is actually you write your code, rather than just object-oriented, you write it as consumers and producers. And an actor has an inbox, in a sense, and has an outbox. And Actors talk to each other through messages. So when I want actor A to do something, I'll send them a message into their inbox. They might be alive or they might be busy. I don't care. I'll just put the message into their inbox and I'll continue my work. And I can get their response when they're done into my inbox. So that enables a sort of free concurrency or less complication when you're dealing with concurrency because you deal in actors. You, see, you think, oh, I'm modifying this actor class, what does this actor do? What should they receive? What, what should they send? But how actors talk to each other is managed by the actor framework. So Psychic started early on in earlier versions using uh, Celluloid, which is a concurrency gin. But Celluloid, as Psychic evolved, Celluloid had a lot of memory overhead on Psychic performance. So the, I think starting Psychic 4, uh, the maintainer is actually the maintainer and the team of, of maintainers actually rewrote Psychic completely to take out Celluloid and write their own actor system that is lightweight. Uh, well, they, there's a really good blog about that. Um, he basically didn't say like Celluloid is bad, but he said, look, for our usage, Celluloid does way more than we need. So we're going to trim that down, use only what we, what we need from Celluloid, and we're going to write our own actor system. That improved Psychic's performance way, way much. We'll, we'll, we'll look at that later. Um, so basically, this is how actors are built. Now, Psychic actors, there are four main actors in Psychic. The launcher is the actor that basically bootstraps the system. It basically, re basically creates all the other main actors in the system. And the launcher's job 
is to basically control the life cycle of both the actor called manager and the actor called scheduled puller. Now, it also listens to the signal handling that comes in from the main thread. So if somebody exits psychic, the main thread will talk to the launcher. The launcher will say, like, OK, cool. Let me actually stop all the system. Make sure everybody stopped processing. We are back to a clean state. Now we're ready to exit. So that's what the launcher does. It also runs a heartbeat thread. The heartbeat thread makes sure that Psychic sends continuously information and detects that Redis is alive. So that heartbeat thread is just making sure that things are OK. Now, the manager is actually the one responsible for creating another type of actors called processors. Processors are actually what process your job. When you are on Psychic and you find your job running, it is the processor actor who created the job class, fed it the arguments, and made it start work. Now, processors could die. In a sense, if your job three raises an exception, the processor fails, the manager can detect that and basically say, oh, processor died. OK, let me remove it from my queue, from my list of processors that I spinned up, and I'll spin up a new processor. So this makes the manager only the, the only process that is alive and that cannot fail is the manager. By the way, if any of these actors fail, other than the processor, if the launcher or manager fail, or the puller, the whole psychic system shuts down. That was intentionally designed so that you don't have inconsistency where your launcher is running, your psychic server looks like it's running, but it's not doing anything. So it's, it was designed so that any main actor dies, the whole system shuts down and cleans up and says, exit. So when you feed your um, psychic process a concurrency argument, dash C number of processors, this argument is given to the manager. The manager is the actor in the system that is responsible to understand and use this information. The processor, as I said, is basically the one that actually does all the heavy lifting. All the real work that you see on Psychic happens by this actor. What this actor does is that every processor that you spins up goes and listens on its own to Redis. That was one of the trade-offs that happened in late Redis design, uh, sorry, late Psychic gem uh, design. Originally, there used to be a fetcher work, uh, actor. And the fetcher actor used to listen to the queues and not let processors go and talk to Redis. What that meant is that you have less connections going to Redis, so you maintain you know, 50 processors but one fetcher. But that also made a lot of overhead of transitioning information, because that fetcher now has to transition to 100, actor, to 100 processor all their messages and make sure that they're all busy. Otherwise, you're not utilizing your server. So in the redesign of Psychic, that fetcher role or that fetcher actor responsibility was ditched, and it was given to the processor. Now the processors, what that means is that now you connect more often to Psychic and you have more connections coming from Psychic to Redis, which is, it depends on your deployment and your production parameters, but that is something that they intentionally did. What that meant is that processors are independent. They can go and fetch their work and basically extract it. They are the ones who take your job and pass it through the server middleware. And if they see that the job did not succeed in the server middleware, they will just discard it and go fetch another item of work. Otherwise, they will basically create your class, reinstantiate your class from the, J from the hash, and basically start running it. And until it finishes, that processor is busy. And they also, what's, this is important, they orchestrate the retry logic. So when the job fails and you configure your sidekick worker to say, hey, if the job fails, retry it 10 times, or retry it in a back off strategy manner, this processor is actually the one that is managing that information. And it actually re-enqueues re it into something called scheduled set or retry set based on your strategy. It also manages killing the job. So if the job keeps failing, the processor will decide, well, you ran enough. 25 times you kept failing. Time to go to the dead letter queue. The puller 
is a side actor. It's not really an important actor in the system. Well, it is important, but it doesn't do as much as the processor. The puller basically makes sure that any scheduled work or any retried job is put back into its original queue after the back off strategy is finished. So let's say I ran a job and I put the rules that if it fails, try it after five minutes. And then if it fails again, try it after 10 minutes. When the job fails for the first time, the processor takes the job and says, well, what's your retry strategy? What's your retry rules? Oh, your retry rules after five times. OK, here, go into the uh, retry set, the, re the scheduled set. The puller is the side actor that is not involved in this whole system, but it just watches that list of retried items. And it basically, at the time, at the right time, it pulls up the item, sees where it should be enqueued, and it queues it back again. So basically, the processor doesn't care anymore after it puts item into scheduled. It just focuses on processing things. And that's how, in terms of design, the processor actor doesn't have to do all the logic. And the puller doesn't have to do all the logic. Each of them are specialized as actors. So basically, it checks Redis every n seconds and basically makes sure that if the timestamp assigned to it, has passed, then it pops it up and puts it back into its original queue. Now, this is what Sidekick actually internally looks like. It's usually it's, it's few actors and a bit of supporting logic, few like retry logic strategies, few classes. If you look at its source code, every actor has a class, has a file. So you'll find puller, you'll find manager, the RB, Schedule the RB, other things. Like, so every actor is just one file, and you'll see all the code of the actor. Everything that the actor does is in one place. Now, this worked really well in early years of Trade Gecko. But as we scaled, we realized that there are certain patterns that Psychic itself doesn't do, and they don't have to. As a, as a gym, it's a general purpose gym. But I'll go through over those challenges. First, I'll show a bit. Uh, a, a small diagram about how TradeGecko works itself. So TradeGecko integrates into a lot of systems. We have a lot of partners. And we basically process everything inbound and outbound over our queues. So everything that should not be performed synchronously goes into Sidekick. And everything is designed that way. We have our queuing system designed based on the partner type or based on the urgency of the job. All that is, well, so <laughs> just ship. <laughs> So <laughs> basically, uh, Tregeco's infrastructure um, deals a lot with asynchronous events and uh, notification to our partners, receiving their events, and processing things asynchronously. So basically, what we realized is that there are, as we scaled, there are a few problems that started emerging from high um, gossipy customers or gossipy partners that want to send a lot of events. So we had issues where you know, if a customer is like onboarding on the, on the system, they would upload a CSV with 10,000 items. Each item needs to be updated and sent to other partners. 10,000 items, 10,000 jobs on the queue. Nobody else can do anything until this 10, 000, these 10,000 jobs are done. So what we realized is that there is a problem of how we can rate limit our, or how can you actually um, work with the rate limits that our partners have? So if, they, if you enqueue 10,000 items, and then let's say a partner of yours can only receive 50 items a minute, then you're going to wait for a very long time to finish those 10,000 items. So we realize that what happens is 10,000 jobs enqueued, 50 pass, 9,950 get failed into scheduled, back into enqueued, 50 out. Uh, and then that keeps on going. And Psychic basically is juggling around the jobs until we're done. So third party rate limits become a really big problem as you're scaling up. Um, another problem, and, and the consequence was that we, we realized that our Psychic dynos were basically wasting their time. A lot of the servers are just wasting time juggling hashes around, but there's no actual synchronization being done. Uh, the other thing is that we got a scare of like, oh, suddenly all oh, like 9,000 jobs failing. Like, what happened? And you realize, like, oh, OK, they were retrying. Cool. OK, that's no problem. And then that happens every few seconds. So developers <laughs> did not sleep well. 
And um, our partners, we want to enable our partners. So when our partner says, back off, I can't handle more data, we go on and say, no, 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 no. We're going to send you 10,000 jobs, and you have to tell each one of them you can't go through. And then the partner is like, OK, you didn't back off at all. Uh, you still called me on 10,000 jobs. You just got 50 through, and I just told you for the rest, queue them up, and that kept happening. So to enable our partners and to make sure that their infrastructure scales too and can handle the load too, we have to find a way to back off early. As soon as something goes wrong, we're like, OK, you can't handle more data. I'm going to back off everything back and wait for you a bit. So that was one problem that we realized. The other problem is fair processing. Now, I say fair because some customers have more data than others. So multiplexing priority becomes a difficult thing. And Psychic doesn't have a lot of priority control by default. You can't say this job has higher priority than others, except in general terms. You can say this queue is higher priority than the other queue. But you can't create a queue for every customer, because you'll have to manage and juggle a lot of queues too. So what we ended up with is saying, OK, sometimes it happens that a customer sends out 10,000 jobs. And other customers want to enqueue 5,000 or two jobs even, like very little amount. But that two, two jobs customer has to wait for the 10,000 jobs customer to finish their processing. And that customer is like waiting. And why is it slow? Well, because other queues or, or other customers have their data being processed. So what we wanted to do is we find a way to intermix jobs. If one partner wants to send a million operation, we have to batch it up in a way and make sure that we allow other partners to get their data through too. So these two problems don't get solved by, in Sidekick natively. So what we had to do is actually we had to um, create a new job abstraction. So what we created is a job that internally we call in Tragico accumulating jobs. Now accumulating jobs basically don't try to touch the complexity of Psychic. So after understanding how Psychic works from the inside and how it, its APIs evolved, what we wanted to do is we wanted to introduce minimal assumptions job abstraction. We didn't want to go and hack and monkey patch Psychic. We wanted to basically introduce an abstraction that does minimum, minimal interference with Psychic code, but at the same time solves these two problems. And to do that, what we did is in the accumulating jobs, we overrid basically perform async and the perform operation. That's it. And what we do is we do our own control into Redis. So we create a set. And that set basically has, it's a sorted set. So that means that it's unique. If you try to enqueue any jobs into it, there's no duplication. So if a partner mistakenly sends us the same event millions time, mil million times, we, our infrastructure can take it in and basically make it one job if the job is the same. So we help our partners with that. Two, if our developers, as they're coding, release something mistakenly into the, the platform, and that introduces duplication, the same thing. This job, this job abstraction can actually take that in and basically hide that information until we escalate it. We actually have a way to escalate these uh, duplications. The other part is actually making sure that the accumulating jobs control us that set. And if any of the failures happen, the whole set gets backed off. So rather than dequeuing or basically rescheduling one job at a time, you reschedule the whole set altogether. So what happens is usually uh, when the accumulating job starts processing, it picks up items from the set in order. We can, you can configure the set to say, hey, you know, accumulating set, process 1,000 items at a time, and then back off. So that enables you. You have a back off strategy for the set. And that enables the set to say, OK, if I have more than 1,000 items in the set, I'll process 1,000, and I'll just give the queue, give the priority to someone else, and I'll just move on. I'll, it will basically reschedule itself. At the same time, you can define failure conditions. So you can say, hey, if you detect a rate limit error, back off and stop processing. If you detect an error in the job itself, don't worry, put it aside and continue processing. So we can actually differentiate the different types of errors and basically route the right behavior. So if it's just one job failure, continue processing, don't stop. If it's a rate limit, 
back off the whole set, and wait for your turn again. So that also enables us not to call our partners a lot. When the sorted set is empty, the accumulating job considers that the child set that it's controlling is done, and there's no more jobs, then the accumulating set terminates. Otherwise, the accumulating set basically keeps rescheduling itself and re enqueuing itself until that set is empty. That's all. Uh, so I hope this was useful. Uh, um, I actually can't look there. We are hiring. <laughs> so if you'd like to join us, come join us and solve these problems with us. Thank you. Any questions? Questions? Yes. What's the difference between doing the checks in the client middleware and the server middleware? That's a really good that's a really good question. The client and server middleware and Psychic are not designed to reschedule jobs. They're designed to decide whether you can actually pass the job in or not. So we wanted first not to actually have too many job hashes sent to and re-enqueued. Like we could have basically done that if we wanted. But we want also to minimize the payload. So in the set, we actually encode the payload differently. The payload itself rather than having the long or the big uh, uh, psychic JSON, we only encode the arguments because the, because the accumulating set controls already all the other parameters of the job. So that also minimizes our uh, consumption of Redis memory. Any other questions? Yes. So for the accumulating job, um, I'm pretty sure there are also other companies that face this problem. Do they use a common library or was this, like, custom so Sidekick Pro had a feature called has a feature called batching. Batching is not similar to like there are differences between batching and accumulating. Batching, for example, still represents jobs in their own units, but it basically includes them into a different set. Um, it doesn't back off, so batching will still try to process everything. Um, so as to my knowledge, I don't know if there's anything else out open source in the wild for this, like similar to this. Any other questions? All right, awesome. Thank you.